On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, Fisherman Senior Editor Fred Galafaro has an update on using circle hooks for striped bass. I have a rundown on local fishing action and Paul McCain has another fly tying how-to. Plus, some of our correspondents are reporting that the bait is starting to show along with some schoolies, all here at thenewfisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we get into my report, the Fisherman is running a subscription special. Get 5 bucks off a new or renewal subscription. That's $24.95 for 12 great issues and weekly digital content you can't get anywhere else. Best of all, with the subscription, you're part of the Dreamboat Contest and your chance to win a Steigercraft Center Console. Just hit subscribe on the upper left on the Fisherman.com website or call 866 866- 347-4836. I have a salt and freshwater update for you from myself. Well, it looks like somebody forgot to turn off the fans last week because every day we seem to be plagued with wind. This kept the boats tied up most days, unfortunately, although a few days, some boats were able to get out and they had some encouraging reports. I got reports of decent cod and link catches, along with a few pollock in the mix too. This weekend looks like it has some fishable days, so fingers crossed. Also, for those interested in bass, we have some encouraging reports from South Jersey. The striper seem to be making their way toward us. It should only be a couple weeks before we do see some striper action along our area. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you. On the freshwater side of things, anglers have gotten in at some decent yellow perch, bass, and pickerel action. Just a reminder that pickerel season closed on the 15th and reopens on the first Saturday in May. Also, keep trout on your radar coming up. Some local stocking should take place very soon. It's a great way to bend the rod after a long winter. Stay tuned in next week for more info on that. If you need to get your boat ready for this upcoming season, Marine Mate of Lindenhurst is having a three-week sale starting this Saturday the 20th. Everything is on sale, including bottom paint, starting at $65 per gallon. We'll have more details at the end of this broadcast or visit marinemate.com for details. Let's check in with News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Owen for the upcoming weekend weather. Rich? All right, thanks, Matt. Hey, anglers, let's check the weekend forecast as we look ahead here towards uh, the first weekend of spring. I like it, but it's still been chilly. Temperatures, water temps, 30s and 40s all throughout the island, so we need some time to get those water temps to come up. The winds will be dropping out after that storm goes by. It looks like Saturday will take some time to settle in the afternoon. 2 to 4, 4 to 8. It gets better late in the day. I like Sunday. I think it's going to be okay on Sunday. A light northeast breeze. See the blues coming in. See settling down. So, uh, again, pick of the weekend would be uh, Sunday. The winds uh, a little gusty early Saturday. Then they uh, settle down a bit, and they go light and variable for Saturday night. Sunday morning looks okay. Much uh, better weekend overall for doing some ocean fishing. I think you'll like it, and temperatures slowly coming up. Uh, high tide, Saturday for the early morning on the North Shore, for midday on the South Shore. We'll do about 49.50, a cooler day on Saturday. And then we'll get some mid-50s heading into uh, Sunday, so things certainly shaping up better. Here's the Guru on Saturday. You can kind of see it there. North, northeasterly breeze, a little choppy, a little lumpy still with some pretty good waves. And then Sunday is the pick of the weekend. Lighter breeze, light northeast, maybe southeast. Looks good. Seas calming down, so that's kind of a good thing. All right, so we're shaping up certainly a little bit better than we've seen the past few weekends. Spring is in the air. Good fishing. Be safe. Matt, back to you. Remember, be sure to check out News 12 for the latest weather before you head out on the water. We have another update on circle hooks from Fisherman Senior Editor Fred Galafaro. Fred? Yeah, thanks, Matt. And, uh... We finally have clarification on the circle hook regs for striped bass. That's a result of the public comment period uh, that's been held over the past couple of months and the ASMFC meeting, which was held on Tuesday. Uh, the final reg reads, circle hooks required for striped bass with bait, which is defined as any marine or aquatic organism, live or dead, whole or parts thereof. The clincher is this last sentence, this shall not apply to any artificial lure with bait attached. That means that bucktails with a trailer, eel skin plugs, and tube and, wor tube and worm rigs uh, do not require a circle hook. Traditional rig deals with one or two hooks do require circle hooks, but if you rig the eel on a jig head or a wobble head, circle hooks are not required. Uh, the new wording was approved by a vote of 11 to 2 with two null votes. Concerning incidental catch, that was addressed also, meaning any striped bass caught incidentally while targeting other species with a J-hook must be released. That was approved by a vote of 12 to 2 with one null vote. 
The new regulation is expected to be adopted by New York by the opening of striped bass season, which is April 1st on the Hudson and April 15th in all other waters in the Marine District. Uh, the original intent of the regulation will reduce release mortality on striped bass caught on bait, so this is a good thing. As for all the online chatter about circumventing the regulation by saying you are targeting uh, bluefish, uh, you know, come on guys. Uh, the bottom line is if you are targeting bass with baits like clam or chunks, bunker chunks, mackerel chunks, herring chunks, you should be fishing circle hooks to begin with. And the same goes for bluefish, especially given the three fish bag limit, which means you'll probably be releasing more fish than you can keep anyway. And bluefish could use some help too, given their reduced numbers. We haven't had any bluefish around in the fall for the last several seasons, and the springs even become a little iffy. Uh, and finally, you're running out of time to get your state park fishing permits if you haven't gotten them already. The deadline's March 31st, and all the info you need can be found in my January editor's log. You can go back and dig that up, um, or you can go to the web address here on the screen, https uh, colon forward slash forward slash parks dot ny dot gov forward slash. From there, click on New York State Parks and Historic Preservation, scroll down to what's new, click on Long Island Permits, scroll down for all the information you need to purchase online, or you can pick up and drop off at a park office. There are drop boxes in the, uh, in the outer vestibules in the, par in the park offices. Those locations are all listed on the website. All right, Matt? Back to you. Hey, look who's out from hibernation from Oceanside. We have Captain Joey Weggio. Hey, Matt, what's going on? So here we go. 2021 is upon us, and the season is starting to take off already. So far in my backyard, I've seen the bunker three times already splashing around back there. Great sign. Also have reports of Jamaica Bay bunker there as well. So, of course, behind those bunker, what comes? The game fish. The stripers and the bluefish should be pretty close behind. Um, I already hear some uh, fish being caught down in South Jersey, and uh, my buddy out east had a bunch of schoolies, you know, small stuff, the little early season, tiny little stripers, but hey, again, it's fish. Um, everybody's excited, I don't care, I'll be snagging a bunker right now and have fun with it, I don't care, as long as I'm bending the rod and having some fun, and I'm making some crab bait. Um, just so you know, my YouTube page, I did change the URL, it is now uh, youtube.com forward slash fishing long island. Once again, youtube.com forward slash all one word, fishing long island. So check it out, and hopefully I'll get some reports up this week for you. That's it. Take care, Matt. Talk to you soon. Back to you. With our fly report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, 70 degrees last week, 30 degrees this week. Uh, big difference. Holy moly, it is cold. I'm actually out at the one of the jewels of Long Island, the Connect One State Park today, with the lawyer and fly riders. They had their Monday fishing. Uh, I'm not fishing myself. I'm here taking photographs for my website and for my newsletters and to help out and for the clubs. Uh, I'm looking forward to the, you know, this warming weather, but I will tell you that there is good fishing. These guys still are catching fish. One of the nice things about this park is it's not the Disneyland it used to be where it was ridiculous fishing. Right now, you have to know, have a little knowledge to catch fish. Uh, a good day now. 10 fish, and that's a good, a good day. Uh, most days, it's four, three, four day out fish. You know what, it's still good. Still waiting for, for salt water. You know what I'm really waiting for is the warm weather, so I can put my canoe on some of these ponds and go fishing with my wife. And uh, the warm water, I'm looking for using poppers and, and uh, little uh, panfish flies. Uh, I can't wait. I really can't wait for that. So, until uh, next week, hopefully it'll be warmer. So, tight lines, everybody. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. Check out this week's video description on YouTube for all the related links and more information. For 2021, we have added timestamps to the description area of YouTube. So now you can jump right into the content fishing area you are most interested in. Now let's watch Paul McCain tie the panfish disc popper. My wife and I love to do, put the canoe on the on our car and hit these ponds that we have here on Long Island. You know, everybody thinks of Long Island as just saltwater fishing. We have a tremendous amount of ponds, and I love fishing for bluegills, crappie, bass, pickerel. Uh, my wife is just really enjoys it, um, and we have a lot to do. But 
I love to tie my flies, so I tie this small little popper that uh, we use. It works fabulously, and it's very easy to tie, and it takes very little materials. So let's get to the vise and tie one. Well, as you can see, this is a very simple fly to start with. Uh, it's great for uh, bluegills, bass, crappie, whatever you want. And it's easy to tie. It's so very easy to tie. We're going to start. We're going to use this. This is a short shanked streamer hook. Uh, this is size six, but uh, you could do it in eight or four. And we're going to the thread I'm going to use because I'm going to crank down is actually uh, red. Red 210 denier. So, first thing I do is I'm going to put my thread base down. Cut it. Now, simple ingredients marabou, foam, little foam. Rubber legs and some yarn. Some yarn. First thing I did was I put down a thread base. I'm going to take my marabou and I, I like to wet my marabou only because it makes it a little bit easier to handle. When it dries, it comes right out. So when I wet it, it looks like that. It makes it easier to tie in. I'm going to Cut off a little piece, measure it out, wrap down, and tie it in, just like that. And what I do is, I take a uh, Bring my thread forward. Take a little piece of red yarn. I'm using red. You could use other colors too. Then I'm going to take a little bit of red yarn. And I'm going to tie it in. And hold it. I'm going to wrap back right on top of the hook. And then bring my thread forward again. And I'm going to start wrapping my yarn. What this does, gives a little body for the, for the foam to grab onto. And when I get to the front, I tie it off. Finish up time. Okay. I bring my thread. Now I'm using red thread so it blends into the body just about halfway down. I'm going to take my foam disc right, right. I'm not going to wrap it in the middle. I'm going to wrap it towards the back of the and I'm just going to do a couple loose wraps, start tightening it, start tightening it, start tightening it. That's what it should look like. Now, I'm taking my rubber legs, and I'm going to... Put one on the far side, like that. And one on the near side. Like that.
Then I'm going to take, and I'm using a whip finish tool. And I am just going to do a few turns like that. Pull it up. And cut it. Brush out my marabou, it'll dry quicker. And I'm going to put a little bit of head cement. And let it dry. And I'll tell you, this is a simple fly. I could easily tie this. It takes me minutes to tie it. It is um, very productive. My wife likes using them, easy to cast. And uh, it takes very little uh, materials. So uh, give it a try. As you can see, this was a very simple fly to tie. And I can't wait to get out onto those ponds and fish. Now, what ponds? Well, it's very easy. The DEC puts out this brochure that you can either go online and order one or stop it in the shop and pick up one. It's free. It has a listing of all the ponds we have. We have mill ponds and kettle ponds, and they're loaded, loaded with warm water fish. My wife loves going out there fishing these little poppers that we tied. It is a lot of fun. So get out there where you can. Stop it at the shop, pick up your copy, and tight lines. For 2021, Marine Maid is extending their annual open house event from March 20th to April 11th. Over three weeks of big savings just in time for the boating season. Bottom paint from $65 per gallon, 20% off all zincs, dock lines, fenders, save big on engine parts, outboard oil, fuel stabilizer, cleaner and waxes, and more. You name it, it's on sale. And this year, the raffles are the best yet. For every $30 you spend, earn a daily raffle ticket. This enters you to win great prizes like this. But wait, there's more chances to win. For every $30 you spend, you earn a grand prize ticket, which enters you into the running to win any of these great prizes. Every day, one finalist will be announced for each item. On Sunday, April 11th, six finalists will become our grand prize winners. The more tickets you earn, the more chances you have to win. Check out MarineMateInc.com every day to see if you're a finalist for the grand prize.